And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Um, right, so up on your screen in a second, you should see the agenda pop up, uh, which will go through and tell you what we're covering within the session there or thereabouts. Now, the, the, the main focus of this is the, again, the EFSA's um, new Academy Accounts Direction for the year. Okay, so that's the real main focus of the, the release of uh, EPCA 40503. Um, and what you'll be seeing as we go through, all we're going to be doing is showing you guys the key areas of the changes, highlighting where you can get more information about those changes, uh, and also, really importantly, showing you how to apply those to your file as we go through. Now, we have got a poll to launch as well. So I know Georgie's going to go through and launch the poll as we, as we go through the webinar. It's just get a little bit of feedback about how you use and interact with the EPAC update webinars uh, to see what you want and what you need for them as you go through. So uh, Georgie will jump in at some point in the kind of stages uh, and just have that uh, and make that available to you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna launch that now. So like Tony said, it's just to get an idea from you with regards to EPAC webinars. So um, we just wanna know from you sort of how many EPAC update webinars do you watch? So we've got, you know, you've got the every update, most webinars, um, and then rarely. Um, we appreciate that it all depends on the products and licensing you have. Um, so that's fine. And then secondly, what you like to see in the release webinars. So do you like to see the new features or do you like to see the bug fixes? So we're going to keep that on your screen for sort of um, the next 10 minutes or so to give you time to answer that. Um, you can minimise that poll down once you've answered it so that you can see Tony and his presentation. All right. So, yeah, anything else that's not within the poll, if any other suggestions, feel free to throw it into the chat field or the Q&A field. All right. So with that said, then I'll leave you to that. Now, what... The really is again what the main focus of the webinar is is looking at those changes from EPCA four zero five zero three. Um, effectively, what resources you got available? When's this effective from? Uh, when you can apply it? So, as you can see on the screen, uh, the the EPAC was available on the twenty second of July, um, and you can all access this depending upon your access rights from the knowledge based website. Uh, it will be available to all AP contacts and to some IT contacts, depending on what you've requested. Um, and from there, what you'll be able to do is get access to the release notes. Now, the, the release notes that go hand in hand with these are put together by the product manager, uh, Ashley Goldsmith, and he goes through and shows you all the highlights um, or the key highlights of the update. It doesn't go through the granular detail. Um, it shows you every single area. Uh, it just shows the main changes and what you need to know. Okay. Now, it's it's really key that you do go through and, and get hold of this before you start working on a charity and a Academy file, especially a Academy file, more so than if you're used to the, the corporate um, EPAC updates where it's slightly different beast, isn't it, to the Academy, where we've got a short timeline, lots of changes coming in potentially from the AAD, um, and we need to make sure we know what's within caseware and what's not. Okay, so to so anyone preparing Academy files, make sure you scan through this. Um, I'm going to run through the highlights now. Um, and again, feel free to, once the recording is available on the knowledge base, to send this over to your colleagues so they know what's coming and what to expect. Now, with this as well, what you can see on the screen is that there's also a T-pack that goes with this. So for the, the regulars, uh, the people who know case for quite well, T-packs are an updated uh, mapping database that goes along with the release. Uh, and generally, that's, that's only along when we've got new disclosures or updated disclosures. So previously, with things like IFRS 9 and 15 and 16, we've had to update mapping so we can uh, enhance the disclosures. So again, this is falling in lines with those we've got new mapping that you're going to need to apply to your installation, but also to the corresponding files as well. Now, we'll cover that throughout this webinar uh, towards the end, just to show everyone how to apply the new mapping to their engagement file. All right, so let's go through and see what's in the, the release. Now, the main areas here that we're going to start off with are going to be reports, statements, notes, accounting policies. Uh, and the main focus really is showing you where there's a changes from the AED, uh, where there's bugs, uh, fixes, where there's enhancements to the product and so on. So I'll be outlining those as we go through. 
Now, the, the, the main ones here, and as you'll see, will be changes for the academies. So you'll see this quite uh, quite consistently through these next few slides, academies only, uh, referencing to the AAD. And again, in this case, maybe uh, showing provision for boarding activities. So one of the new areas um, is to be included within this release um, will be the, the provision for boarding activities. Now, to help me highlight some of these changes to you and make it quite clear, what I've got is a few files open today as well. So what I'll be doing is I'll be jumping in and out of some case with files um, and just giving you a before and after feel. OK, so on the left hand side here, you've got a file that has been applied. Well, it's, it's been set up and it's got it's got EPCA 40502 applied to it. So the previous EPAC, um, as you can see from the screen, though, I have got the the, the up recent updates applied to this uh, to my installation. So what we'll do then, let's go through and open up those accounts. Now, what I'll do, first of all, is let me just navigate up to the sofa in this case. Now, the, the key thing really here for you is when you're rolling full files, you need to make sure you have the EPAC installed. And we would suggest that you apply all updates to this engagement. The reason being is because there's lots of changes from the AAD. Um, some of them are quite obvious. Some of them are very subtle. Um, and unless you have the time to go through and familiarize yourself with all the areas of Coke Town and the, the release from the Education uh, Skills Funding Agency, then it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit tricky for you to keep up to date with every single thing that should be included in the account. So that's where we can rely on caseware, hopefully a little bit more um, to, to apply these updates to the file. Now on here there isn't a huge difference within the layout really is there that there's just some different ordering uh, and there's some different uh, rows that have been inserted within the the expenditure section so here on the left hand side on the old file you can see that there's no provision for boarding activities now that may not affect your engagement at all um, so it may not be relevant but however it may be uh, so in that case what you're going to need to do is make sure you do apply the epacs as and when you roll forward your files or to make sure you install the EPAC before you start creating any new engagements. Um, once you've installed that EPAC, what you're gonna get is the disclosure over here uh, and you have these provisions for boarding activities. Now, what lives alongside this will be new mapping and that new mapping is gonna go through and populate this row. So this row within the sofa will be populated by that new mapping, which I mentioned previously, uh, which will be made available within that TPAC. OK, now to to update these on files that you've already rolled forward and opened before applying the EPAC, what you can do within the file is you can go to help and then from help there, you oh, sorry, here we go. Let's go to tools, sorry, not help. It used to be on help a very long time ago. Um, in here, then what we'll do is you click within the table and you can either select KO update or section update. If you select either, what's going to happen is you're going to get prompt to say, okay, do you want to update the free sections? Well, yes, we'll say yes in this case. That's going to take us to the next stage where we see that very, very familiar um, update screen. Now, when we're in this, it kind of tells us how old our knowledge libraries are within our engagement. So you can see here that I've got lots of uh, 28th of January 2021. So this is when that previous uh, charity release was made available. So that was E. EPCA 40502, that was released back in January. Um, and over here, then we've got KFI up that date. So these are the ones that were being made available in July. So you can see here that there's some new KLs for all these areas that should be updated. Now, caseware guidance would be always to take as the, the updates as and when available, um, especially the ones down here where we can see that they, they aren't anything to do with the notes themselves. So looking at headers, style bars, accounts. Um, even if you want to take the notes because you've done quite a lot of work, then we, we really need to make sure that we're taking these ones. Um, sometimes as well, you'll see mandatory tags and sections down there as well. Uh, and I'm sure for those people that are familiar with the mandatory tags, KO update, uh, you, you'll be very familiar with the reasons why you need to take them. Um, so when you're in here, what you can do is you can specifically update those case with functionality ones. But as we said, we'd recommend that you select all when you update all the knowledge libraries. But again, adhere to your own firm policy. 
um, and be prudent as and when you do. However, for this case here, I'm going to deselect it uh, and we can see the sofa up there. Okay, so in this case, all I need to do is tick the box and press OK. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm not going to make you watch an update to the file. You can clearly see that the updates being made on this side. Now, when we, let me just get back into the slides quickly. Uh, there we go. So when we're looking through here, there's lots of other changes as well. We've got, uh, again, statement of funds, erroneous mat uh, prior year table. So it's an issue whereby under certain circumstances, the prior table from multiple academy trusts was displaying for non-multiple academy trust engagements. So there's fixes in here as well. Um, so make sure that when we are going through these notes that we, we are aware of these because that could be quite useful to a lot of people that if that does pop up, if you've got the old templates, to know that if you apply the update, it's gonna fix it on those, those engagements. Now, also, as you go through here, you see there's minor wording changes. Again, these are gonna be very obvious. However, that there are quite a few of these as we go through. So keeping up to date with the knowledge libraries is gonna make it a lot easier. If I go through and jump into just the, let me go, jump through into the trustees report, for example, just give you an example here. Um, there we go. Let me add the stage. There we go, just recalculate the document. As of when you jump in a case sheet, the standard message, there we go. All right, so again, the trustees report here that there are changes and there's wording updates in it. Um, but again, there's quite a lot of content here. And the reason why I say for you to always take the updates is because you want to rely upon case where are updating the wording uh, for you, especially when there are subtle changes. You don't really have time to go through each one of these, do you? And, and look at those changes that have been applied to the file. So again, when you are updating these, um, make sure you are applying all the updates to the engagement from the, the, the KO update screen that you saw a moment ago. Because it just saves us having to scan down here and see actually where are the changes. Because again, especially when this is populated with the trustee support information, uh, it's quite, quite detailed, isn't it? Um, and it's quite a lot of screen space for you to go through. So I just wanted to highlight that really. And again, another point really for you to always go through and when you're updating your engagements, rely upon case where's update uh, utility uh, and apply those knowledge libraries to your engagement as you go through. Now, when we're working through the, the updates and the notifications and what areas have been updated, um, again, there the aren't just academy areas that's updated. You can see down here, there's greenhouse uh, mission section that's also been included within your file. Uh, so it's not all to do with AAD. There are some specific areas as well that fall outside that scope. Now, moving on to the next section here, which will be the reports and account or notes and accounting policies. We can see here that we've got areas of funding and education operations notes. Now these aren't new notes. However, they are updates to the layouts of these notes. So what we need to do is again, make sure that we're familiar with what's updated. Now, again, for me, the easiest way for me to show you this is a by a side-by-side -side example. So again, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll show you that in a second. But just to be aware of it, really, uh, there's allow makes uh, makes use of the new mapping codes. So on, let me go through a couple of screens here. We get onto the sundry areas. The new mapping codes that we should be expected to see within our engagement files will be K21 codes and also these boarding school codes, specific codes. So and this will be for income and expenses, and there'll be a KB for your income and a YB for your expenditure. Now, what we really need to do is make sure that these are always within our engagement. Otherwise, even though we've got this new note, so even though we've got the new note, um, it's not always going to be able to be populated because if we don't have these map codes here, if we go back up to this new uh, funding for, for education operations note layout, then there's going to be areas of it that we're not going to be able to utilize. So let's make that a little bit clearer. And let me go through and show you on the screen. All right. So again, what we should be seeing in a second is a couple of caseware files opening back up. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is just going to jump down to the funding there we go here. So this is note number four, funding for Academy's education operations. As I said, it's not a new note. It is a new layout, though. Um, so what has changed? So there we go. And get to the wrong one there. There we go. Right. So overall, from this section here, there's not a huge difference. Uh, however, what we can see there is that, OK, there is a new road for other DFE and group grants. Okay, 
So what that's going to be populating then from, and what we're going to be looking at to populate those is these other government grants. Now, if I scroll down on the old style note, what you can see here is it just goes straight into the DFE and the SFA grants, which again, still reside underneath, but we've got this new section of the table. Now, what we're going to need to do is, first of all, be aware of how do we populate this? So how do we know what populates this row here? So if you weren't familiar with the new mapping, how would you find out? So what you would do and what we'd suggest you do would be to click within the row, go to the table section of the toolbar. Let's make this a little bit wider as well. And then from the table section of the toolbar, what you're going to see when you select within a row is that you get the row configuration of the row properties button. Okay. Now, when you select this, what it will do is it will open up the row configuration screen and that will tell you whether it's what, what, how it's populated. Now, this is slightly different between company templates and charity and academies. What we'll see here is that we just get the three sections of the map number. And the fourth section, as we know, would be the, the tier that defines what um, type of fund it relates to. So whether it's a restricted fund or a general fund. Okay. So that's, that's why. Now, what we'd see as we go through here on the right side, on the left hand side of that row, is there's a little called bar, uh, and that should coincide with what the section is on the screen. Now, unfortunately, on this screen, there's nothing going to be showing up because there's no value populating, and this screen only shows uh, map numbers that have got populated values. So, what we need to do is select the all mappings. Uh, checkbox and what that's going to do is load the whole mapping database now give this a moment it is loading in quite a lot of map numbers um, for us to, to use now as you can see now there's lots more blank ones we know where we need to go though we need to go down to k codes um, and specifically in this type we need to go to k21 uh, so there we go let's keep going down and as we scroll there we can see, now see that that row is highlighted in yellow uh, and that's signifying that we're using this K21-00 uh, code, uh, regardless of what fund. Now the fund will obviously determine what column the information goes into. So we need to make sure that we've got the K21-21 code in there. Now, looking at the academy files from working papers here, the, the academy before the EPAC uh, and before the TPAC isn't gonna have the correct mapping. Okay, even though I've applied the pack to my get into my installations, you can see on the screen I've got the right update. It's not going to automatically update the, the mapping database within this particular engagement file. Okay, so if I go to account, assign mappings, as I scroll down here and I go down to my K codes, so you can see there we've got our education operations K21, expand that open again. And then over here, then what we can see is that, okay, we don't have any new codes, do we? So we've got the standard, uh, again, activity, sorry, activity one, and then income type one, uh, which is called the general annual grant, in this case, all the way down to income type 20. Now, this is in the old file. If I go to the new file that's been updated to have the new mapping database uh, that was released with the EPAC, uh, EPCA 40503, then what you're going to see here when I go down to K21, uh, as you probably guessed, is that we can have a slightly different feel. We're going to have a slightly different range of map numbers there. Um, and you can see here we get down to the K20, and then we've got K21 all the way through now to K30. And then we've also got K2149 and K2150. So that's going to be our new KE codes. Now, as I said, though, there's also some additional... Uh, KB codes and there's some YB codes. So as we scroll down here, what you see is we can see there's some KB1 codes. Now KB1 and KB2 all relate to boarding schools. Um, as we scroll down, we'll get to our Y codes. And again, we're gonna see that we've got YB codes. So again, YB and YB1. So again, all our boarding school codes, okay? So within our old engagement, even though we've got the applied the pack to our installation it doesn't update the engagement the individual engagement so what we're going to need to do is update, update the da mapping database in this engagement to make sure that when we're in the accounts and we're trying to populate these rows here that we've got the mapping there to populate those rows okay so let me just go through quickly on a file just to show you that that, that populated let's just go back into the engagement i was going to go to the trial bounce here quickly just update one of the k codes so i'm just going to change it to the k21 code so we're going to change 
I'm going to change my gag quickly to make it nice and obvious um, and easy for me to go back and change it, uh, revert it back to what it should be. So I'm just going to change this to K21. 21. As you can see there, I've got my restricted there, K21, 21-00-02. Uh, Select that. And now as I go back into the account, so documents, accounts, and I'm just going to close that screen there as well. There we go. You see now that 4.2 million is automatically bot placed that row. And it's always the only map uh, bot placed in that row due to that, that map. So if you don't have it in the file, you can't do that. And you won't be able to rely upon the trial balance to populate the accounts the way we need it to. Okay. All right. So that's a little bit of an insight into the populating of the note. Now I'm just going to go through and change that back quickly just to my K21 codes. So there we go. And it's because of throw there, and there we go. All right. So that is the, the funding for education operations note uh, and the changes that you should be expecting to see there. Okay. Um, again, if you were to be working with that note, uh, for anyone that isn't confident and you need to update it, remember uh, it is quite easy for you to go through and update that note. Let me just load it up. Here we go by going, clicking into the notes and selecting the tools and that KL or the section update, the SEC update button from within the note itself. Uh, and what that will do then is if I just go through and open up the other file quickly for you. Uh, again, there we go, section update. Okay, and then at that stage again, you're gonna get that same window open. And at this stage, maybe in case you've done quite a lot of work, so you don't want to update everything here. So you can then deselect all, scroll down uh, until you find the correct note. So there we go. And you can update it from there by, by using the chat box. Okay. All right. So that was the funding education operations note. Again, make sure that we are taking the EPAC, but also make sure that we are we have the right and the correct mapping within that engagement file. Because otherwise you need both within there to populate the note. So we need to make sure that they're both updated okay now other areas in here as well as we go through uh let's go through to the next section here so we've got the the boarding activities and trading account uh so a new note has been created in corporation ukb and the yb mapping codes um which again i just showed you those mapping codes within the file within the, the account side mapping screen so let's go back quickly and it's going to open this there we go so you should now see uh, the case of screen back on. Um, let's just go through and open up the, there we go, let's jump down to that boarding school one. Uh, there we are. Should be jumping down there now. Oh, can't be found. All right, so why can't it be found? Okay, so thing is here is it's not actually within the file at present, okay? What we've done and what you'll see is from the accounts prep table, if I scroll down, um, there we go, let's get that second. There we go. It's got a little bit too far there. There we go. Bonus calls and trading accounts. So there's the new note. Now this note should automatically be populated by your mapping, okay? Over here, you can see there's a question mark and you can override it. So if it is relevant to you, you can go from your prep table here and you can override it, okay? However, what you can also do, and just to show you on the, the mapping quickly, if I go through and I change the mapping, so let's go through and let me just change now the, let me change that gag one, two, we'll change it to the boarding school, uh, KB codes. As and when we go down to the KB codes, there we go. I was gonna change that to income type one and we'll leave that as restricted. Now what we should be seeing here is because we've activated and we're using the mapping, Case we should now update the relevance of this column and it's automatically going to go through and build that into the accounts. So if you can see it here through the prep table and it's not automatically showing, it's got the question mark there, it's just because we haven't provided enough information yet. We need to go through and assign it to an account code with the appropriate map number. And in case there's automation, we'll take care of the rest for us. Now, let's go through and just have a quick look at this note. So that's whilst that's building in, what we'll do is just give it a second. Uh, and then we'll navigate down to the bottom of the account and we'll have a look at that new node structure as well, just so you're nice and familiar with how that works. There we go. All right, so there you can see that 4.2 million again populating, and that was the value that was sitting in the, the GAG um, account. All right, so 
on here, what you'll see with this note is, first of all, that it is a four column uh, note, which again matches up from the guidance provided from the Academy of Cast Direction. Um, you won't be able to change the format to a two column format. Uh, it will be fixed to the four column format for that exact reason, uh, to keep it in line with the guidance. Now, these rows here will all be made available from or populated by mapping. So again, what you can do is you click on the row and you can go to table and from table there, we will be able to select the row configuration. And again, what that will be doing there is giving us the guidance to say where this is populated from. Now, this one's slightly different. As you can see, it's populated by a custom calculation. Now, for the ones of you that are more familiar with this, uh, with the setup within Caseware, is that you probably would have come to this screen in the first place because you would have noticed that this button here was activated, the cell configuration button. Um, and what that does is that is where we go through and provide the custom calculation. So clicking on here then, what we can see is that that row here for income type three um, is populated by YR0. YR0 stands for the current year, KV1, well, that's that new map number range that's for boarding schools. 12 there, which would be your um, income type. And then next to it, uh, for the ones we've got great eyesight, I need to hear it a little bit closer. Uh, there's an asterisk there. And that asterisk is a wild card. And what that does is says any variation of that map number that starts off with KV1.12, and at any point, any variation from that point will all be added together within one balance. Now you can go through and modify these calculations if you need to, um, but these have all been set up for you, so you shouldn't have to. However, what this will do for you is tell you about where you need to map it. So if I went back to my file now, and we went to, let's change that gap on this time to 12. So KB1.12, well, to change, we've got 10 there, haven't we? So let's change that to two. And now let's go back into our accounts. And there we go. Just gonna cancel this out. Again, oh, did I click off the side there? There we go. So that's there. And then back into the account. So what we should be seeing is that we'll then move that balance from one row to the next. So at least there then, what that would do is give you some guidance on how to map these. Now, one of the things, and again, the, the product owner here, manager, um, Ashley Goldsmith, highlighted this. And it's, it's one of these areas that you're unlikely to get this level of detail, are you? Um, so what you're going to be doing in year one, year two, would be potentially setting up a case for specific normal accounts to, to populate this. Now, you can do that, and you can also manually enter data in, within this table if you wanted to. Okay, so you can go through and overwrite the values within these cells. Um, so you've got two options, effectively. You can either go through and manually populate them uh, by entering the figures in, or what you can do is from the face of the TV itself is set up some new normal accounts specific to this note uh, that are assigned to those map numbers. Now, when you do that, again, to, to help you out and to, to, to make it easier in year two and year three, what you can do is you can post those movements, those adjustments using your adjusting journal entries. And from there, what you can do is you can create reoccurring journals so next year, it rolls forward with the pro forma, that started the adjustment you already need set up, ready for you to enter the balances in. Now, for the ones you don't know, you don't have to worry about clearing those journals out in year two, year three, um, and updating the balances. What you can do there is you can set these journals up reoccurring to exclude amounts rolling forward. So that way, when you get to year two, you can just plug in the current year figures and you don't have to worry about overwriting potentially the wrong values from last year, okay? Um, if anyone wants any guidance on that at all, let us know um, and put a question in the question field and we can uh, make that guidance available to you, okay? So that's the other, that's the new note really, the board, the, again, the boarding schools trading accounts. That'll be made available. Uh, really there, just so you're aware, it's activated by mapping. You can manually override it yourself. You can populate it by mapping, and you can also manually populate it uh, by just entering the values into the blue cells provided. Okay. All right. So on that side, then the board activities trading account again. Just to recap on the mapping, make sure you have got that mapping available within your engagement file. Okay. Without that mapping, again, you won't be able to set up the notes, so it's automated automatically populated by Caseware. Um, see. The benefits of doing that means that you can then go through and update the trial balance. 
the trial pads will then agree to the face of the accounts, which is always an ideal situation. And if we do go through and post any adjustments, because again, maybe those figures will be updating as we progress through the accounts job, uh, at least we don't have to go through and manually update them um, on the face of the accounts. We can just update the TV. We will make sure it all balances uh, and it'll be taken care of on the face of the accounts uh, by case. Rate. Okay. Now, other areas in here um, that will be updated will be the, the, the help tech sections. Um, and these, again, Ash, Ashley and his team are always uh, trying to keep on, on point with these, make sure the guidance is there, whether it's the guidance from the AED itself or whether it's help guidance from Caseware. If anyone doesn't know what those guidance buttons are, uh, let me just quickly just jump back into those accounts for you and I'll, I'll show you. Um, all right, so over here from the related parties, these are these guidance notes that we, I was referring to. Okay, not particularly that, the particular one from the update, uh, but these are the question marks, the guidance areas. And in there, what it does is, it, again, it just gives us either new tools, uh, it gives us options, disclosure options, or it gives us guidance. So again, um, make sure you are having a scan through these, especially on new notes that you're not familiar with. Um, because there are lots of useful information, hints and tips held within them to help you obviously prepare those notes. All right, so again, back into the slides here, there's updates to critical accounting estimates. Um, again, there's also some updating there to related to COVID-19. Um, had to sneak in there somewhere. So what you'll see within your engagements is that there's a new section that's been added in. Um, and if I go into the operating lease section here, and here we go. So give me a second, it's just loading up. Now I was going to navigate up to the operating leases. Uh, there we go. All right, so this is the new body of text that's been added in. Um, it is activated uh, by the skip text, uh, the checkbox here. So if we were put to put a tick in the checkbox, it will highlight the text. Um, it's all within the green editable field. So you can go through and edit this if you need to make it more specific, or you've got your own firm wording that you want to update and include within there, uh, then feel free. Again, it's the usual editing options. Um, to, to enter in the um, bullet points, as you can see here, you will need to go into enable editing mode to continue those bullet points on. Okay, so if I try to press shift enter here, you can see it doesn't give me the bullet point. You need to go into the enable editing option to, to do that. Again, if you need guidance on bullet points, uh, let us know in the chat field. All right, so that's mainly all the areas that I want to cover today um, in relation to the AAD and the, the core changes that have been included with an EPC A4503. However, there's some other areas and functionality that have been included as well. There's been additional styles that have been added in, and this is all done by user feedback. We've had requests for additional styles to make it a, so we can get a more consistent layout throughout the accounts. So Ash has uh, agreed and added those in, so that's now available within this template. Uh, there's also been an issue there where the HMR filing for academies, um, Ashes and his team has opened it up and reduced the requirements for mandatory tag section. Um, so again, that's in there. And also this housekeeping function, um, there's added a new option when running housekeeping to ask if a user, if they wish to check for overlapping sort sections. Um, this was already happening. There was a few users that when they were running this utility, they said that the speed was it was it was slower than usual. Um, so and, and the reason being is because the development team built in an additional feature, effectively looking for overlap sections. So I, I won't go into what overlap sections are for the people that know, then you can understand the issues that have popped up on IHBRL tagging and submissions from those overlapping sections. Um, so the, the development team built a uh, a tool in um, to look for these overlapping sections. So it used to be the case here that you click on housekeeping, uh, you'd see this currently there are no library files, but then you'd go through this long pause and you'd understand why. Instead, now what happens is we get a new message up to say, okay, do you want us to look at look out for overlapping sort sections? Um, and yes, we'll run it or no, we won't. Okay, so now you've got control of that housekeeping option and you can speed it up if you need to. Okay, however, again, I think it's always quite a useful thing to check overlapping sort sections uh, and definitely before we start running any IHBRL oh, tagging to, to sort of remove any potential uh, errors that may pop up from those overlapping subsections. Okay. 
All right, so with that said then, um, that's all I've got to cover from the update. As I said, the release notes are available to download from the, the knowledge base. Uh, feel free to go and get yourself a copy. What we'll do as well is we'll include a copy and link to that article uh, within the Q&A document that'll be made available with this, um, with this webinar. Now, the, the last section that I said I'd do is looking at how to update your file, okay? Um, so looking at time, got enough time just to run through this quickly. Won't be too long on this. Now, when you're updating your file, okay, I'm gonna use the Academy file that we saw earlier, hadn't had the right mapping updated. So we're back in this Academy before, okay? What we would need to do, first of all, before we update files, make sure that we've got this update in. So have we got the right release? Uh, in this case, we've got the T pack, and that's uh, identified by the T. And we've also got the, the right E pack in there. You can access that information from going to other docs and to support information, okay? Once we do that, then at that stage, uh, and by the way, if anyone wants to step by step on this, within the release notes and in the information released by Ashley's team, uh, they give you the guidance there. And also on the knowledge base, there's lots of step by step articles on how to do this exact process. Okay. But all you need to do is go to File, Copy Components, and then from that stage, copy into this file. Now, from here, you can have all your templates. Make sure you do select the right template. Okay. Don't select Academy Accounts make sure you select Accounts Advanced Charity and Academy. Um, from there, double click on the template, go down to your groupings and mappings. And from here, what we wanna do is we wanna select mapping. From mapping, there's some additional options we need to check. So we click on options. And in this case here, we don't wanna replace. Um, the main reason why we don't wanna replace, you know, you go through and you set up all your, so your expense types. Uh, so expense type two will be employees cost or whatever it may be. If we use replace, then what that's going to do is that will revert that description back to expense type two. Um, so we definitely don't want to do that. So we want to select merge. OK. And then for the map numbers that are the same within both files, what we don't want to do is we don't want to override any descriptions or groupings. So just select none here and then tick the auto fill account properties. Once you do that, just give a quick glance. So merge. For the map numbers are the same. Okay, select none, tick the auto fill, double check that, press OK. From that point, that's all we need to do on this screen. So we can now confirm, select next. Over here, clearing components. Well, we're taking the information from the template. So in the template, there shouldn't be anything we need to clear, okay, because it's blank in that respect. So we can select next and then finish. Now, this shouldn't take too long to run through. Um, however, it's going to take a moment because there are I think it's over 10,000 map codes in there. So give it a moment just to merge those two databases together. And then once we've done, or once it's merged, just go up to assign mappings and double check to make sure you've got those new map numbers in there. Okay, so go down to your K21 code first. We know that's the first one there. And there we can see we've got all those new account codes, okay, or map codes, sorry. And then go down to KB. We can see again, we've got the KBs there for our boarding schools. And also we've got the YBs as well as you we scroll down. Make sure they're all in there, okay? Um, and make sure they're in there before you start working on the file because you're gonna to need to set up areas within your trial balance to populate these notes for, again, for boarding schools and so on. So we're gonna need the mapping there for you to be able to do that. So check this first before you build the accounts, okay? All right, so that's all I've got to show you. Uh, and hopefully you found that useful today and the highlights. Again, any questions, feel free to send those through. And what I'm gonna do at the moment is I'm just gonna hand you back to Georgie to see if there's any questions that are coming. Perfect, thanks, Tony. So we have had a couple of questions in. So the first one is, when is the supplementary bulletin update coming out? Um, are you happy to answer that or do you want me to grab that one? Uh, yeah, again, it's really well, I, again, I think, Ashley goes with the, the product managers giving some information on that to say that it yeah. is being worked on. Um, is there an exact date, Georgie? Yeah, know. well, he said that it's due out at the end of September. Okay. Um, so we have received the bulletin last week. So the week commenced in the 19th of um, July. So that was just slightly before. Um, I ha And he's written the specification for the changes. Um, it will then need to go into development and then finally QA ahead of a release. Um, but yeah, hopefully due out end of September on that one. 
So, but thanks, Ash, for, for making that available to us. And yeah. Um, um, and then secondly, so we've had a question from Luke. So he's asked, um, in the wizard on the funds tab, can you label up the new K21 mappings for lines 21 to 30 and run the routine, or would you have to name them manually in the assign mapping screen? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just back on the screen here. So just for anyone who is new um, to case where, and again, isn't familiar with the, the layout, what I'm going to do is going to go into general information quickly, just so I can show up on the screen. Um, what I was referring to there was the, the utility within the wizard that goes through and enables us to go through and automatically update all of those mapping descriptions. So you can see here what we've got is that case where we'll say, okay, here we go. And give some guidance in, on exactly that. So types 31 and other grants. So in here, what we've got is some guidance to say, okay, um, from expense type one, uh, should be generated grant, two to 18 individually material. And you can set these up, other DFC grants automatically and type again, in this case, automatically for other DFE groups. Now from here for academies, K21, uh, it's given that guidance within here. However, when you go through as, let me just go through and set these up. Uh, example. And then let me just copy this so you don't have to see me typing every time. There you go. You can see Ash and his team have set out the additional um, types there for us. So I've, I've added that into the, the expenses, the examples, but you can see again, those types there also correspond to your um, revenues or incomes. So you can go through on your wizard and you can update those descriptions for 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and run that automatic routine as well to save you having to do it manually for your file. Um, once you do it within that one file, what you could also do is to, you could use that copy component routine I showed you earlier to copy those updated descriptions into the next engagement. Um, and you can do that a lot faster by using that copy components routine. So if anyone wants any help on that as well, please feel free to get in touch. But yeah, to just answer your question and to share everyone else, that's those new uh, income types have been added into the wizard to make the experience a little bit more enjoyable. Perfect, thank you. Um, that was everything in the way of questions that come through. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna share the results of the poll quickly on your screen um, for those that wanted to see those. So um, how many EPAC update webinars do you watch? So we've got a 50-50 split there between most update webinars and rarely. And then what do you like to see in the EPAC release webinars? So majority is new features. And then we've got um, bug fixes as well. And then we had a couple of people jump on the chat and sort of say that they actually um, like to see both of those, but obviously they could only make the one selection. So thank you for that. We really appreciate that feedback. So I'm just gonna stop sharing those. Perfect, okay then. So um, if we have a little look then, so upcoming webinars can be found over on the events page um, and you'll be able to um, see all the agendas and register for those as well. Um, and then uh, the LinkedIn and YouTube, which Tony jumped to ahead of me. <laughs> So uh, we do have a LinkedIn page and a YouTube channel as well. So we've got Client Services Caseway UK Limited. So if you head over to both of those, so with the LinkedIn, we post on there about the upcoming webinars and various other bits of information and news um, in relation to Caseway. So head over and give us a follow. And then YouTube as well, you can subscribe to our channel. So as well as posting the um recording today onto the knowledge base we would also post it onto youtube and you'll find multiple um quick vids and various other bits and pieces over there we do understand and appreciate that some firms do lock youtube down so you may not be able to get there but if you can we really appreciate that to, that subscribe subscription should i say um Perfect. All right, then. And then if you haven't done so already, already, um, then head over and register for our knowledge base. Um, and like, us, like I've mentioned, um, the recording will be on there. And also we have many articles and helpful guidance on there as well. 
Perfect. OK, then. So that concludes the webinar today. Um, thank you very much for all of your input with regards to the polls and the questions. We do have a survey at the end and we'd really appreciate if you can take the time to, com to complete that survey. It will allow you to sort of um, comment on any future webinars you'd like to see. Um, but yeah, any feedback is very much appreciated. So right. thank you very much for your time today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Uh, see you next time.